Officer, that nice young man in the long underwear saved my purse and all my money. Good work, Spider-Man. It's a good thing you came along when you did. You're the best friend this The Amazing Spider-Man vs. The Kingpin is an action game released on the Sega CD in 1993. The game is a remake of the Sega Genesis version, featuring some gameplay tweaks, FMV cutscenes, and a brand new CD soundtrack. The best addition to this version are the cutscenes. The voice acting isn't half bad, especially for the era, and the quality of the video is quite good. The developers produced the video sequences with the Sega CD's video color limitations in mind. The result is a nice mix between a comic book aesthetic and Saturday morning cartoons. The Amazing Spider-Man vs. The Kingpin has a simple plot. The Kingpin, Wilson Fisk, has planted a bomb in Manhattan that's set to go off in 24 hours. He then goes on the news and alerts the public that Spider-Man has gone rogue, placing the blame squarely on our hero. Spider-Man is now tasked with the thankless job of defusing the bomb and saving the city from a nuclear disaster. The controls here are surprisingly solid. The web slinging is particularly satisfying, and it's very easy to swing across the stage with great accuracy. Spider-Man can also climb on the face of buildings, which looks awesome. Lastly, Spider-Man can climb on the sides of walls and ceilings. This is seamless as well, with slick animation as he navigates different planes. The rest of the controls are strictly generic. Spider-Man can use his web to stun enemies and then punch them. The sub menu also lets us use a shield or a more powerful projectile, but I honestly rarely use these. The web is limited, however, as represented by the blue bar at the bottom of the screen. Thankfully, there are plenty of power-ups in the level to replenish the web. There is also a map screen of sorts featuring dozens of locations around Manhattan that can be visited. Most of these are not necessary though, and all you really need to do is search for a giant boss head and enter the location marked in red. Honestly, the entire map screen seems rather pointless, and I would have preferred a more linear approach. After playing through the red level, you are then taken to a boss level to fight a villain. After each fight, a new cutscene is played that keeps the plot moving along. Early on, we learn we must collect five keys in order to defuse the bomb. These keys are found by taking out the remaining bosses on the map screen. This will help me clobber the kingpin. What's happening to me? Help! <laughs> On the surface, The Amazing Spider-Man vs. The Kingpin should be a great game. However, it has some serious design issues. First, the level design is almost non-existent. Far too many stages are a simple, boring romp from one side of the screen to the other. As Spider-Man is so versatile, it's very easy to quickly navigate straight to the exit in no time. There is a minor collecting element here, with comic books hidden throughout the stages, but your progress here resets when you restart the game. The Amazing Spider-Man vs. The Kingpin doesn't utilize the Sega CD's storage and instead relies on a password system. Not only are the stages boring, the boss fights are uninspired. Each boss has just a single pattern that is very easy to spot and exploit. They provide pretty much no challenge. The Amazing Spider-Man vs. The Kingpin is actually incredibly easy from start to finish. The only challenge comes from figuring out what the game wants you to do at times. Sandman has to be taken out by luring him near this fire hydrant and then turning it on. Venom has to be defeated by ringing two bells. The bomb is diffused by going to the menu option, selecting a key, and then figuring out which pixel you have to stand on for the key to be inserted. Some things are not obvious at all. The graphics in The Amazing Spider-Man vs. The Kingpin are bland. Spider-Man looks great and features some terrific animations, but the levels look bleak, repeat too often, and are lacking in detail. On the flip side, the soundtrack is better than average. The cheesy rock ballads are a treat to listen to and are a nice tribute to the early 90s, even if they don't necessarily fit the theme of the game. The main track even features vocals dedicated to Spider-Man. The quality and production values are excellent. 
The Amazing Spider-Man vs. The Kingpin could have been a truly standout title in the comic book video game genre. Unfortunately, Sega only got about halfway there. The Amazing Controls feel really unique and do a wonderful job capturing the essence of Spider-Man. Sadly, the rest of the gameplay elements are mediocre. The best part of the game are the cutscenes, and there is some fun to be had progressing to the next and watching the events of the story unfold. Nothing is broken here, but Sega left a lot on the table. 3 out of 5. Is this what you came for, Spider-Man? <laughs>